How's everybody doing? So this is the Duncan Way Crossing here and I want to show you how I made it. And um, first things first. So if you're wondering about this overpass, I have an episode that covers the full build on this right here. If you look under videos and you scroll back, scroll back, there's the vlog number listed. And I basically show how I built this from wood and plastic, etc. Now this just pops up, but I'll show you that in a second. But what I wanted to say here first was, you know, you can't have everything on a shelf layout. Like shelf layouts are great, just like any other style of layout is. But there are, every layout has its caveats, right? And the one with the shelf layout is you just never have enough space. But isn't that the way it is with every layout? So you basically, you know, you know the footprint that you're going to build your layout in. You're over-inspired and super passionate about your railroad, whatever it is, whatever period, whatever genre, whatever style. And you want to squeeze it all in. So that's the biggest challenge. So I wanted to squeeze in some of New West in the background there and then a transition to Langley. This building in reality is like 10 times longer than this. But if I want to model this building faithfully and this lead to IPEX plastics, well, I would have to join a modular club and, and, and build two or three modules just for the lead, for it to be prototypically accurate. So we compress things, we add things, we improvise, we cheat, we use artistic license, trains overlap other scenes sometimes, but that's just the way it is. But you know, if you're a modeler and you have a philosophy that accepts this particular style of layout, then you really don't care about that. You care about modeling and immersing yourself in the spirit of the scene. And I'm very much passionate and stoked about the spirit of Duncan Way because I drive through here almost every week. Okay. And I get, like, I catch trains sometimes, locals, like a local operation. Just like this, you can see I've picked up a few um, cars, pl plastics hopper cars. I found four of them. I, w I wish I could find more though by Atlas. I'll show you one. They're, uh, you know, like they're okay cars, but you can, I'm going to repaint them and weather them a little bit and change the registry marks on them to match the prototype. Okay, so that's a start, right? And besides, the operation is compressed as well, so I won't be pulling like a string of eight or 16 cars. I'll be pulling four tops. You know what I mean? So that, so the scene gets compressed, and so does the operation, like logistically. That's just the way it is, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this overpass out of the way. I'm just going to move this truck. Uh, let's just see. We'll put it right here. And the cop car and the naughty little girl in the Porsche. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just pull this out. Like you say, I build everything this way in a modular concept so that I can do this, right? Did I ever tell you that I actually hate CA? Well, I don't hate it, I just don't like it. I've been using it for years as a model maker, obviously, and model railroader in this case. It's a necessary evil. But a couple of reasons, I'm allergic to it. So I get the worst sinus allergy two days after I use it, if I hover over it like this. So I try to get through it quick. That's why I use solvents a lot. It doesn't seem to bother me. The little older stuff. You know, but uh, I know it's necessary, you know. I try not to use it, though. I try to use, that's why I use a lot of matte medium. It's water-based. I don't, 
you know, have any bad reactions to it. So, you know, so there's part of the reason, right? Because it's, I mean, CA revolutionized the movie industry back during the Star Wars era it was, uh, um, Lorne Peterson was the guy that, it was already out there. They used it in Vietnam and stuff, but he introduced it to the film industry of model makers instead of waiting and mixing epoxy all the time. It was just instant, right? Because the model was only needed for, you know, temporary shots and everything. But you could put parts like this on, you know, and immediately get results. It would be fixed. That's how they built the Millennium Falcon. So over wood and plexiglass and acrylic and everything. And a lot of solvent and a lot of CA too, apparently. So, but, um, so here's the sidewalk panels, almost done here, right? So uh, you wonder about this, like why is he covering this up? Well, this was an extension of the parking lot. When I laid this, this balsa wood, it's one eighth balsa wood down, which is one of the reasons why I love it is I can revise and glue to it nice like this, it's lightweight. I can cut into it. It's just a real joy later on, you know. We ultimately make executive decisions when we build model railroads, and we usually have reasons for doing it. And when you're experienced, you know ahead of time, okay, I'm gonna use this material because I know I'm gonna run into this issue down the road. And it usually happens like that. And, you know, I ran a little bit short right here, but I'm gonna pack this out. I got another, I'm gonna lay another layer here like this, because this is how much I need to the barbed wire fence to Ipex plastics. Sorry, it's off camera a bit, but because beyond this, which you'll see later, is a whole. I'm going to build the whole Ipex plastics industry. The well, it's not a facade; it's a three-quarter, like a cut three-quarter facade. I'm going to pull. On, I'm going to build on a quarter-inch plate and drop it in, so I can pull it down on my bench and work on it. Like build 90% of it, 95% of it, right, and tweak it later, and just drop it in place. And when I want to move the layout, or if I have to lift it on and off, it'll just fit down in because. One eighth plus one eighth is a quarter inch and it'll be on a quarter inch ply. And then I factored in right here. Sorry, I'm a little bit up in the right corner here, but this is where the uh, pipe system will go for offloading the plastic pellets. And then the Jersey barriers will cover the seam. As you see, I planned it that way, but I'll show more of that as I get more into it. But anyway, really liking this road here. And so, yeah, this road is like, it worked like this texture and color works for the parking lot but i'm going to re-skim this now but all the parking lot's done this way right you know what i mean down the slumlord way or avenue or whatever that street is and then the, of course you know a lot of it got covered up ultimately but that's okay but it's lightweight and very stable so uh, i'm going to set up for this and then i'll show you how i skim coat this i'll probably do it once let it dry twice once twice so four skims to get the texture I want, and I'll build it up and just try to make one pass and then leave it, right? I find with this acrylic gel, so I'll just say this in closing, that you really gotta let it dry. It usually dries up here really well, but if you wanna sand it and get good effects, you wanna apply it in thin coats, not in one go. Don't just, not like plaster or, a, you know, epoxy resin and plaster suits the mainstream model railroad culture for a couple of reasons. Number one is they do it in one, like one pour, one spread, move on, it's fast, right? I don't care about fast. You know, I mean, oftentimes I'll take the path of most resistance, not least resistance, because you get the best results. But anyway, it's all about layers uh, for the experienced artist or model railroad or whatever, and ask any older model railroader and they'll tell you, they'll nod, you know, they'll look at you and wink, you know. Anyway, so this is gonna be quite nice here. And then when I get that done, I'm gonna, Use a little, like a uh, square piece of maple, and I'm going to push in. I'll cut at the end or sand at the size of the, the drain grids. I was going to model, like, the first part of the actual sewer drainage system. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, right? But I'm going to put the grates in, and then I can paint them rusty. It'll be a nice touch of rust, you know, along these uh, concrete troughs. You know, put one over here, maybe and one here somewhere where the low spot of the road is, but anyway. So 
So I got this mask off now. And uh, if you didn't think I was crazy by now, well, you must think I am now. Eh? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to use up this uh, crackle paste. So this is going to crack, but that's okay. Because I want some cracks if they want to play. And I'm just going to do a couple different layers here. Because it will shrink back. So I'll skim it a couple of times. But it's going to get this first crackle paste. Because I have some by Liquitex. This is golden, which is pretty good. Liquitex has a finer resolution to it. And uh, so this will help create that camber that I want on the road. That will really be evident when you view bench work at 57 inches high. You know, you're sort of standing rail side. So that's why, why I'm doing this. I'll show you how I'm going to skim it. So the yellow tape is covering the, you know, the concrete rain gutter. That's made of cement or concrete. The actual road is asphalt. At least that's the way they do it up here in Canada anyway. So I'm just going to lay this on and then uh, I don't know what I'll do with the rest. I guess well, we'll see. So now that that's on there, there's a good generous amount. What I'm going to do is use this damp rag just to clean my tool off here. And I'm going to grab this piece of uh, I think this is 80 thou scrap piece of plastic. And I'm going to start it here. I'm going to put that back. Oops, I got a little bit sloppy there, but that's okay because I'm going to re re skim this. I just use a light grip on this tool so that I don't lose the camber of the That hurts. That's okay. That'll get down. Uh, that'll get picked up on the next pass. Okay, so there's, you can see there's a camber there, see? Going to the center of that half round. Now this is gonna shrink quite a bit, which is good, it's thin. It dries really fast when you skim coat it thin like this. Um, it really doesn't matter what you use like all these products that I use they're all compatible you can layer if, like if there's there's 25 different you know like opaque transparent mediums like this like these kind of uh, texture paste and so on and they're all compatible with different effects and you just try stuff with them and uh, take notes and if you like the finish and they're always really cool and you can appropriate them to whatever texture you want to use. So I'm going to let that dry. It's going to crack and then I'm going to re-skim it again. Boy, I really like the way that. See that along there? Wow, that looks cool. And then once that's done, I'll mask that off and then I'll do the other side. You can see how it covers that half round nice, okay? So here's the second skim coat and you can see where this yellow tape is, is the actual cement, the rain gutter part of the curb system and this is the asphalt and I've done two skim coats on here now. Just playing around with some of the different textures just to see the kind of results I'm going to get. I mean it's always like that. Art is always a learning curve. Like you never just go, okay, got it all figured out. Oh, okay, use this. Yeah, fine. 
that'll work. Like it's not like RTR product, right? Like I think we're a little bit, the model railroad sort of mainstream kind of culture, as creative as they are and as fantastic as the layouts they build, we often think, okay, is it just one pour? Can I just pour the water? Can I just pour the cement? Can I just pour the grass on? Can I just pour the dirt on? Can I just pour the ballast on? And that's the way we think. We don't actually think about, you know, actually doing a little bit of work or trying stuff or trying two or three or four, even five layers of things to try to find a certain really cool look or texture that hasn't been done before or seen before or even noticeable, right? Um, and then of course it depends how you view the layout. Like I won't be generally looking down like this, like this would be under the overpass, but I'll be looking at it from this angle and from over here and there'll be different lighting and stuff bouncing off the pavement from the buildings, things like that. Stuff you don't see now that will play later on when you complete the scene, right? Do you know what I mean? So you can see how this half round has given me a beautiful finish here. And now I can taper this side next so this will dry so tomorrow so i'll do a couple skim coats here and i'll try some different you know i might try a more crackling effect but we'll see i might just leave it the way it is because it's under the overpass and it wouldn't see a lot of rain so that's the one thing about it but glover road version two on section three will see a lot of fatigue along the shoulder and stuff and doing it this way now i'll know how to do it then do you know what i mean and it's always like that for every one of us everyone that we all it's experience and practice and discovery when we use different mixed medias and try different things we push the envelope push the learning curve a bit more and get these kind of results that um you know are kind of almost revolutionary to the individual because you haven't experienced it yet but when you do it'll just make you more confident in all the other textures and things as you go and as a result your layout has a greater impact okay okay so here is the part that i'm really happy with and i hope this shows because uh, if it goes too, if it's too dark, the video, then it doesn't show. And if it's too bright, it gets washed out. But I hope this looks good. So this is what I'm after. Okay, so here's the entryway into Ipex Plastics. This is exactly the look that I wanted. And it took three to four skim coats to get this over balsa wood. And it, it, like, it feels like, if I close my eyes, it feels like I'm in scale and like if i was living in the world feeling the real concrete and looking at it like see the fragmentation on the edges where the weights of trucks and it just and then there's going to be ballast in here and then when i peel this tape off i'll just show you this because this part's uh was not skim coated with crackle paste it was just the ceramic stucco to to uh look like fresh asphalt see that so this is the same as this part of the road that you're going to do one more skim coat on. So if you want a cleaner asphalt look, you don't put crackle paste over top of it. If, look, look at this. This is perfect. This is like, this is 100%. Like, I'm so excited about this. You can tell with the tone of my voice, mm -hmm. right? Like, this is perfectly level. The track here, like rail is just like, you know, a quarter of a millimeter higher than, like, it's perfect. Right. And when I scrape this off and pull out these, you know, spacers, that'll clean that up. But this is exactly what I wanted. And see this here? I wanted this too. So I'm going to pull the tape out. That'll fragment a bit. I'll fill that with ballast. My goodness, I'm so happy with that. This is where it's too aggressive. But I like this too because now I got something to work with because there's a bit of a dip in here, like a bow, because the way it shrinks, like that, like that's what I like about acrylic too like this is it's always shrink so you always know that it's going to like pull in a bit and shrink especially with track and it'll always drop down below the level of the track to a point where you won't be you know um burdened with trying to level that like i just love it right like this road here um if i can just move the camera just a little bit to try to see that there look at this like this i love too 
there's some slight cracking there. See that? And then here's for a newer road, but this is done with ceramic stucco, which is more coarser than the natural sand. And then there's pumice or pumice uh, courses that's even higher course rates under golden and it's all compatible so that is excuse me sorry uh, that is why i just love working with acrylic mediums uh, when it comes to modeling because they are awesome and this will stand the test of time and it takes paint acrylic paint and enamel paint or any kind of paint awesome right in the same way that you would put oil paint or lacquer paint over flat acrylic tamiya. That is the method and the reason for my madness when it comes to using professional artist products in conjunction with hobby acrylic paints as well, okay? This is gonna be fun to paint. So you can see then, just in closing, that this is just the little 43 by 43 thou or 40 thou in the right angle, which was previously glued before the filler went in. And this just peels up easy, just pulls right up, like, <laughs> and then pulls any plaster, like, has kept that whole flange way clean. And it's just a matter of just a very minor cleanup. And this acrylic, once again, comes off of metal fairly easily and the top of the rail is easy to clean and it looks beautiful it really does so that's the method for that okay and now that this like i know this is good this is good this road's good uh the ones that i know that are good what i'll do is is i'll just mask off over the rail like here i'll just run some masking tape here and there just to protect that and then I'll re-skim this area here and the same as the road surface here. And in the same way, this concrete is masked off. It's just part of the process is some of the masking to protect it all before I actually uh, dive into the paint process, okay? Okay, so here's an answer to a question. Why go to all the trouble to put a, a angle flangeway on the inside of the track there? when you can just use plaster and just gouge it out with a tool. Well, you can do that too, right? If that's the look you're after, nothing wrong with that. But here's uh, a couple of advantages, okay? So number one is it has a nice professional clean look and there are many prototype, very track situations that are just like this. I've shown them in photos. Even uh, the lowly building supply does this. Because I think I mentioned when the forklift dries over, if you don't have a metal flange inside the, the inner core of the fill here on the pavement as the forklift goes back and forth, it'll crush and deform in no time at all because of the weight of the forklift. It'll destroy the asphalt. And that gets costly for a building supply. It's their property. They have to pay for it. Or depending on the agreement of the short line, maybe they do, but I don't think so. You know, I think that could like those are gray areas that end up costing somebody so that's why they put metal flanges on industrial or embed them into industrial areas because of that reason because of the forklift activity now here's the second reason so i want to re-skim this this is a fringe benefit or a dividend of doing uh, the angle so i want to re-skim re this because this is like brand new asphalt i could leave it it looks good right but i want a little bit of this look here you know, i want it to be uh, you know to look like what I've already finished and covered up here, but I haven't done this part yet So I want to basically take the uh, HO scale 4x4 that I used You know to pack out that flange like originally that I pulled out and I just cleaned off the acrylic with my fingernail Just comes right off. So this is like usable again, right? And I'm just gonna lay this in here like this. Okay See that and I'm just gonna push it down right back down into the flange way beautiful smooth like so now I, i'm going to re-skim this with a thin uh, crackle paste right and then when it does what i want 
I'm just going to lift it up again, right? With the same tool that I used to pull it out. And she's good to go, okay? Okay, so here's the finished road surface pre-paint. And uh, I'll just make sure it's focused in here good. Um, I just love it. So there's about five skim coats here. I use ceramic stucco, crackle paste, and natural sand. I, I, I like the ceramic stucco and the crackle paste combination mostly. But hey, why not? If you have a third ingredient and it can add extra effects, because that's what these are. See effects there? Effects, right? Acrylic, acrylic medium, see that? You know, um, I think they're revolutionary uh, for the model railroad. I think people are afraid of them because they get used to seeing one thing they trust, you know, just mainstream culture, use this, use that, and this is how it's done. And no, it's not always done that way. And if you want to get effects like this, you know, maybe this is more for the advanced modeler. Um, like you can't achieve that any other way. Like who would engrave that? I don't know anybody that would. I mean, people may have, or you can, right? Still get the same look and effect. But the resolution of this and the effects and the variations, like... There's some transparency here too, like, like this has been skimmed over with sand, so with acrylic sand. So even though you can see those cracks, those won't show. I didn't want too much of it. I wanted patchwork and variation. And this part of the road is exposed to the weather more than this part here, which is not as fatigued. But you can see, right? Like the road is under the overpass, so it's f still fairly tight and good. However, this was before they paved the actual road. This is the photo of the actual location that I'm modeling. This was just recently paved and repainted. So, But as it stands, like when the municipality paves roads, it doesn't mean they do overpasses. Uh, the railroad's on their own budget. Unless they work out, you know, in a community way to to do it the same time the municipality does it they will but oftentimes you'll see roads that are really good condition and the actual crossings are quite deplorable and rough you know because the railroads don't need to care about that they're in the business of moving freight safely they're, they're not concerned about you know kids riding <laughs> their skateboards over it right <laughs> or bicycles you know but anyway um yeah really like that really like how that turned out like i say that was five skim coats varied um you know that's the fun thing about this product is you actually have to use it and experience it and take risks with it and if you don't take risks you don't get the effects okay so on to paint to summarize quickly again so this was just a pale gray wash right like it was um, either cement gray or this pale blue gray are the two colors I usually go with now here's the thing so this would pass as sort of bleached cement already with a bit of weathering if you wanted to use other oils or pastels this would be great but because these roads and surfaces are all asphalt. Asphalt's much darker. It has a lot of oils and tar in it. So they're, 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 it's a different kind of pavement. So this is uh, basically dark sea gray and dark gray blue. I'm going to add a little bit more blue, but I'll show you how I do this here, like from this. Like this is coming along okay. Uh, I don't want to make it too much darker than this, but I want to have a distinct asphalt look. And the concrete will be the curb work will look like this. So it'll be a nice contrast. So basically what, um, 
what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wet it down with a bit of water. I'll try this bigger brush here and I'll just wet this down. I'll show you what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to take uh, some of this, well, let's go with the dark gray blue because I kind of like it. Uh, the blue gives it a kind of a tar sort of look to it. And this is quite thin. I've already pre-thinned it in the bottle some more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on. Well, that disappeared quick, didn't it? So I'm going to lay this on. You can see how it capillaries into all that cracked asphalt look, which I really like, by the way. Okay. And ah, take some dark sea gray. I need a little bit thicker paint so I can show you this method. So I have a wet rag. You can use a sponge as well. But uh, the whole point here is start super thin and try not, like resist trying to finish it in one covering. Like be patient with it, you know. And uh, you'll see that you'll be able to achieve really stunning results quite easily. So that's too heavy. Well, I mean, in some cases it might look okay, but for from the way I view it right here, uh, I think it's too dark. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take just a wet rag, okay? And I'm just going to make a bit of a puff ball on the end like this. And this is a damp rag, and I'm just going to... Just like a sponge. Sponge up some of it, okay? See there? So that is another layer that I can work with. But you want to build it up slow because if you don't, you'll get ahead of yourself and you'll just lose a lot of the effect, all that work. Because most of the work here was in the, you know, the spreading and the creating the texture, right? So all you need to make the texture pop is thin washes. So that's looking kind of cool. Now here's another thing you can do too. You can take a damp cloth. It's okay to take it off because you can put it back on. I'm just going to pull across like that. This is drawing nice. I like this here. I'll just point this out. Like I've seen this on tracks. You get like this tar and oils oozing up from the weight of the train going back and forth. So I'm liking some of that. And I like some of this here. And of course, when I get the lines painted, there'll be some lines up to here. Some yellow and white lines, road markings, etc. will look really cool. But uh, I'm getting there. So I'll treat the same like that. You can see this road, I added another wash. I kind of like that actually. It's got that more dry faded under the overpass kind of look. And I might just go with that because there's a lot of paint on here like railroad crossing and stop sign, double uh, yellow line down the center. Then with the contrast of the lighter concrete sidewalk and then the driveway going into Ipex plastics, okay? So I just wanted to show this quick. So I peeled the tape off the concrete sidewalk and curb work. As you can see, like here's that half round that formed the crown of the road, right? So it was high enough. So this road, you can't notice as much on this angle, but it does drop down from the crown down to the base of this gutter. Now there are no drains on this road in the area. I looked, they're further down, but I might put one in here, like in there somewhere maybe or something, but but uh, you can see like it's just around the same level as that, which is the way it should be, right? So what I'll do is I'll mask off this road with some Tamiya. Then I'll do the masking for the uh, road markings, etc. Paint this, the sidewalks and the curbs concrete. And uh, we're almost there. It's looking pretty good, the road. So you can see that I just masked off the curb work and took a bit of USAF light gray and some pale blue and get a sort of a light, lighter gray 
I like a little bit of blue in there when it comes to uh, concrete. And the nice thing about this paint is, is it's excellent to paint with a traditional brush, better than Tamiya. I mentioned this before, Tamiya doesn't, well, I don't think Tamiya was ever designed to paint with a brush, at least not through acrylics anyway. So, because, you know, it cuts through the layer underneath, whereas I find that the layout just goes on really well. So I'll just paint this by hand. I'll put a couple washes on it and call her done. Peel the tape off and then mask up for uh, the yellow double line and some of the graphics on the road. So time to paint some graphics on the road. So I just downloaded this off of Google Images. I just Googled, uh, the keywords were paved railroad crossings. And this came up among thousands of other images. But uh, this is, you know, a basic standard. You know, they're going to vary from country to country or area to area or municipality to municipality. But it gives you a pretty good guide uh, as to how the uh, approach graphics look on a road to a railway crossing. So I, I'm using Tamiya yellow, but I diluted it. This is from this is was emptied and then into other jars, and then I added white and then a little bit of orange because I find that the yellow, the stock yellow, is just too bright. I want this more orangey color. You can see the graphics here from location. So that's what I'm going to do, and it's quite thin. So, and it might, you know, I can basically uh, just make sure that's down tight. I can basically just put a slight filter over top of it when I weather the road a bit more if I want. And uh, I probably don't want it to be super opaque, meaning one solid color. I want some of the fatigue to show through. So I'll just try... A uh, light pass like this ought to do. But there's something about painting graphics, especially on pavement when you get in close. And the actual pavement has been textured and painted. You know, you lean in, right? Like that's the uh, kind of the philosophy of the diorama. The closer you get, it should get better, not worse. How's everybody doing? So once you get your pretty little crossing done, you need to clean it up so that it runs as good as it looks. So this one here, I'll show you how I do this. And this works with plaster, but any medium really that you use, whether it be wood, plastic, acrylic, or plaster. Um, you can see there was a little bit of a bump there, probably from a piece of ballast, which I haven't really investigated that yet. Now, I take my NMRA gauge, and you can see it says flangeways on the top here. Okay. See that? So what you want to do is turn off your locomotive so you don't short out the track unplug your power cab or whatever and take this and you see this flangeways there okay and just pull it gently and let it scrape the inside of your buried track section there's like in this case it's plastic so it'll just shave that off nice and then a little bit of white will expose but that's okay if you get with some white scratches because you can come in with some vallejo like dark sea gray and just restain it and touch it up and it'll look like additional anomalies on the pavement and i just basically run that through several times gently just like a scraper like a carpenter scraper they use sheet steel like this to scrape seams and things right it's the same principle 
And then uh, make sure you clean out any ballast that might be in there. And before you know it, like it'll take a few times, but you'll get it so it's perfect. And then when, when you're running after a while, you won't even think of it anymore. And uh, she'll run as good as she looks. So that's what I'm in the process now is just cleaning out and double checking these flangeways. Trust the NMRA gauge, right? It's the standard that's approved. And if it goes through smoothly enough, and even if the flangeways are a little bit more proud, which is okay too, then you'll have, you know, you probably cover a lot of other locomotives that maybe have, you know, wheels that are a little bit out of gauge or whatever, okay? Okay.